I want to quick go over 4.3 rebuild. Now, people may ask you, why not just put a 350 in there? Put an LS motor in there. This is going in an S10 Blazer, so not a lot of room. I'm not doing the, putting the engine myself. Someone screwed up my engine. I let gas run down the intake when they were checking it for fuel pressure. Lost a rod. So that and also adds to it. Got to pass emissions. It's a little lighter weight, but you're not getting all the horsepower. So the reason is I'm stuck with it, basically. So we put a competition cam in here. The smallest one they offer, I think it's a 206 duration on the intake exhaust, thereabouts. A 500 lift, thereabouts. The reason I took the small ones because they have a little online calculator that tells you your torque and horsepower. And the other ones were very little difference horsepower, but this made the most torque. Um, but V6s have a higher stall speed for the torque converter, so I could have got away with the middle size cam. But we just put the smaller cam in. So here is what you have to do. Now you're going to have to make the engine adjustable valve train. If you, unless you can get someone to measure your push rods, then you don't have to make it an adjustable valve train because the cam base circle they call it is different. So you have to be able to compensate for it. And 95 to 99 heads have a different size stud in them. Rock arm stud. These are 10 millimeter on the bottom. The other ones, 2000 up, have 8 millimeter. So you really don't have to do much to make them fully adjustable. These I had to change the rocker arm studs. You can either get 7 16 or 3 8 3 8 is more common. If you want to go bigger rocker arms, you're going to need 7 16 generally. And then also you have to go narrow, which means they're not as tall. And generally I think a little bit about the width too, because I just found out. I went with the AR, well ARP is the only one studs you can use. Um, they have a uh, 3 8 conversion kit. They're for the 60 degree angles, like the Cavaliers and stuff, so the 2.8s, 3.1s, I would assume 3.4s, and so on. They're a little short of what you need to do. Short, they're about 3 eighths of an inch short, so they won't reach the top of the rockers barely. Actually, they won't. So, that was was an issue to you with these. These are longer. These are the big block studs. These are the same freaking thing. There's the part number. These are taller actually. Three eighths. So there's actually your, your height difference right there that you're missing from the other ones for the minimum. Now there's the stock rocker arm or rocker arm stud. There's the ARP slightly taller. So that gets you your difference too you need. What I had to do too, because I don't want to, I used two washers. These are grade eight. These are thick ones. These are almost perfectly the same size. So I only used two of them because these 7 16 studs are a little bit longer, a little bit taller. So I didn't need to go any too much extra. But as you can see, on my camera still enough, I definitely got more than enough thread. And the reason why you can get, get away with shims, these are grade eight. You actually should use ARP ones, they're a lot more expensive. You just have to use grade 8, but I used two of them together. You can stack washers. The engine builder told me. I've seen other people do it. And that gives me a height. Now by putting the washers under them, you're saying, oh, I'm going to lose the thread that goes into the stud. But actually, you're not, because the water jacket only has, only uses about seven threads, five to seven threads of the head. Otherwise, you'll be in the, the water jacket. If you can look down here, I'm not really going to be able to show it that great, but there's not a lot of threads in there in the first place. So you're not going to have to worry. And with my two of them, I still have plenty of thread. Okay, here's what two of them on there look like. Lots of thread for what it's got to go into. So now, and then of course you have to, if you make it 
um, adjustable. You have to use the poly lock because you're not going to have enough room to use a regular nut, rock arm nut. So there we are. And then what we did is also you had to change the valve springs. We went to have your valve springs. That's the part number we went. They're like 50 bucks. They're not. They look identical to the stock ones, so you're not going to be able to tell. So now we got an adjustable valve train. Now the problem is the next step is uh, the valve cover. Let's put the Vortec valve cover on. Well, backwards, forwards, it really doesn't matter for our example. So I don't know if you can really see this. There is a gap. It's a little dark. Excuse my lighting. But there is a big gap, so you can, you're screwed right there. You can go online. And a company in Australia sells them for 300 bucks. Actually, there's a company that sells things to make your non-Vortec Vortec engines too. They're 300 bucks for the front timing cover. Okay, so I've read some stuff. And what we did is get a standard steel one. So that would be would be 80 something to 94 or 95, probably 95. And if you can see here. Get into light a little bit. I just cut them at the top because it's hitting between the rocker arms here. And the rocker arms are very, very close. So put that on and turn it around. Then we pause it. Okay, currently it isn't going all the way down on this one. Could be because I did the poly locks. And these poly locks are bigger than what I needed to do. And then for roller rockers, these are one. These are 1.5s. I don't want to change them. If you change the ratio, you see these are almost hitting here. You'd have to ream that out a little bit. So we didn't want to mess with that. And these are Pro Comp because these are 120 bucks with shipping thereabouts. Pro Comp Electronics. They're not rated really good at all. These seem to have been rated okay for what these are. Here's the part number. These are 7 16th uh, studs. So that's why we just went with these because these are the narrowest you can buy. They're inexpensive. Narrow ones are around 300 bucks a set. You can buy V8s. That's fine. Um, then another thing we did, we did a timing chain. We did a high volume, low pressure oil pump. We did um, aluminum water pump. On that auction site, they said it was high performance, but it came in a plain white box with generic packaging, not name. So I don't really think that. So that is pretty much it. I think what we're probably going to do is see if we can find short poly locks because these are a little taller than I'm probably going to need if I can't get away with it. With the valve cover and another option to do to get around the valve cover issue is I was thinking. Cut the outside, and it'll have a gasket on it. Put the valve, cut around the outside of it here. Cut like right around here, and then I'll have um, spacer, and then the vortex will have its gasket and go on top of there. I don't know. That's still probably not going to give me enough. And then also the vortex has little tabs, as you can see right there. So that is how far we've gotten. Done a lot of research. Most. Most shops don't give you any information. I've learned most off the internet. Try and ask the shops a little bit and getting all this done. So that's how far I've gotten so far. But if I take these studs, we took them off. Now it's fitting. So my guess is I'm going to adjust them first and see if this will fit down. So, and of course, these are definitely going to be painted before they're done. It's way painted. We had to cut them at the top because they were hitting right between there. So I made this video a little short. I know people don't like to follow long videos, but there's a lot of explaining to do. And it took me months of looking up forum sites, talking to people and all that. And then spec-wise, this should be according to the CompCam's little program. You can download a real easy, simple program. It should be about 230, which is a big difference over a 180, 190 horsepower one. And so if I was to do this again, I get the 2,000 up heads 
may be considered a newer 4.3, big difference. Here's some things I used for my build. They were 30 thousandths over. These are rebuilder pistons, so they're sunk down two thousandths, so you lose a little bit of compression. And these are based on you're going to shave your uh, heads, mill your block, or deck the block, excuse me. So I gained a little because of the height, the dish versus the dome. These are domed slightly, but only one tenth. Yeah, I kind of got stuck at that with the engine rebuilder. Not telling me they were rebuilder. They, were, they call them rebuilder pistons. They're good for rebuilder engines. They're not good for compression or anything else like that because they're compensated because you're gonna shave, shave down the you know, basically shave down the block, whatever. So that brings the pistons down a little lower. So what we did, if you see this little tab here, that's one of those metal gaskets. Cosmetic. I can never say it right. Comedic. There it is. This is 27, so it dropped us a little more compression. So now we're at nine and a half to one. They're really close to that. These are about 80 bucks a piece, but unless I want to buy pistons, hang rods again, then I would have to do that. And just here's a little sheet that how I tried to figure out the compression. You got to do the figure out your deck, your gasket bore, your gas thickness. This is based on a 4.3. And the heads were 64 cc, but um, since we shaved 10 thousandths off of them, they were 63s. Piston was 6. Gasket R was actually 0 0.027. And the gasket board is always 60 thousandths. There's nothing you can do with that. Um, and then the board cylinder. So I hope this uh, gives you some idea, some motivation of what you can actually do with these little ones. This comp cam said this one would be about 230 horsepower, so that'd be kind of nice. And then that's all done up, adjusted with the 7 sixteenths. And it looks like we're good to go. Looks nice and pretty.